Well, hello, and I welcome you today to our Trading Spotlight webinar here on Monday. It's the 17th of February 2020. And uh, you may be surprised <clears throat> because usually this is Paul's slot, but um, Paul is uh, today not available. And uh, so the question was whether I could um, take this uh, slot over then. Um, and I, uh, yeah, I have to say yes, definitely, because um, there's one very, very, very interesting topic um, today, which we can make a topic here then, and with what we can talk about, the so-called biochemistry of trading, in fact. So um, this is not necessarily um, on, on, on a trading strategy or something, but I, I want to shine a light on why it's so important to know um, or, or to, to have a deeper knowledge of what's going on behind the scenes, what's going on within your body, um, and why it's so important to know that, because then um, certain aspects become clearer. For example, I mean, I could easily say, um, if you're a starter, if you're a beginner and trader uh, in trading, um, then start out slow and uh, don't trade too much, don't trade too often, and especially don't take too much risk in your positions. Well, it's great to say that, but the only problem is um, that many people probably won't really understand why this is the case. And uh, there's a simple reason to that. And today's uh, webinar here on the biochemistry of trading will uh, give an uh, idea on uh, why this is in fact the case. So today we want to look at the question, what are neurotransmitters? What are neurotransmitters responsible for? And then how do neurotransmitters affect your trading? How can you profit, especially from this knowledge then in your trading? Um, and these are the questions we want to answer today. And um, I will start with an anecdote. Before I present the anecdote, probably some words on me. That's uh, again, it's not so interesting. Um, if you're not here for the first time, if you listen to the Trading Spotlight webinar several times now, you probably um, have read the interview I uh, did together with, with um, Admiral Markets around half a year ago when we started this um, very successful project, Trading Spotlight webinars. The most important thing I'd like to point out as, as usual is that I'm located in Berlin, in Germany. And this is necessary to say because Admiral Markets, the, uh, yeah, the broker behind um, this whole project and, and making all this possible, giving you this um, input here for free, is um, um, also located in Berlin and Germany with one office. In fact, um, Admiral is a global ethics and a CFD um, um, a broker and the financial um, service provider here to clients ar ar around the globe. Um, yeah, again, um, with 20 offices around the globe, why is this necessary to, um, to say? If you're currently probably looking for a broker or if you're um, already an experienced trader, not looking um, for only looking for a broker who has a very competitive offering, also something you will definitely find when trading with Admiral Markets, something I will go into detail in a few seconds. Um, but also you are looking for customer support in your native language. I think then Admiral Markets is definitely worth a look because having 20 offices around the globe um, gives you a very, very high chance of uh, reaching out to someone speaking your uh, respective language and answering your questions then in your language so that there's no misunderstandings or something like that. Something, yeah, it's, I mean, it's quite normal to feel comfortable, to feel good and great about having someone speaking your, your language. I think this is very important, especially when it comes to such a sensitive uh, topic like, um, let me just see, okay, um, uh, financial services and, and then trading in general. And then in regards to competitiveness, I also have or I want to point out because it's just you have to point it out because it's really great. Um, uh, the offering um, in regards to the uh, costs you face when trading um, and being offered from Admiral Markets is um, outstanding, when, especially when it comes to the DAX. So I'm located in Berlin, Germany. And here among uh, professional traders, we usually refer to Admiral as the so-called DAX expert with a highly competitive offering with 0.8 point spread. Um, there's also the Admiral Prime offering, a 0.2 point spread. And then on addition, you pay a commission of 60 cents per CFD so that you come out at uh, 0.8 points here in total um, costs per trade too. Admiral Prime is probably also noteworthy because here you also find um, a very, very competitive offering when it comes to FX trading. So it's not only interesting for, uh, for DAX traders, but also for FX traders, definitely worth a look. Um, beside all the regulation stuff and everything. So 
give Admiral Markets um, a quick glance. Probably the quick glance will um, result in more depth research you will run on AdmiralMarkets.com. And now let's start out with today's topic. What are neurotransmitters? So um, I wanted to start with a small anecdote um, how I um, came across this topic. So um, it's in fact around three months, four months ago, um, my wife came to me and asked me whether I'm probably interested in joining her um, at a hotel or on a, I want to, if, whether I want to join her on a, on a seminar trip um, from her employer. Um, and uh, she was asked whether she wants to go there and, and um, educate herself, become more, um, um, uh, yeah, let's say um, more fascinated about a topic in regards to um, um, imagining people. Um, she's an, um, uh, by the way, an optician. So um, in regards to, to uh, glasses, sunglasses and everything. Um, so complete different topic. And I was like, hmm, do I really want to join her here? Because the um, um, overall uh, headline of this event was like um, the ways to success. And it was like, hmm. Yeah, there are so many ways to success, and especially if you're uh, if you're if you're um, in this business as I am here, trading business. Um, everyone tells you how to become successful, a great trader, making money, and like, hmm, okay. On the other hand, um, I checked out the hotel and found out they have a really nice cigar lounge, for example. They have a wide range of great whiskeys um, available there. And I said, well, probably not such a bad idea. So. Um, uh, and so I, I joined her and I also joined her during this, this um, seminar. And I have to admit now, after some time, it was one of the greatest seminars I've ever uh, listened to. In fact, it was only, unfortunately, I have to say, it was only uh, two hours long. And um, here, these neurotransmitters were a big topic. And um, I, 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 I really, um, it was like I, I studied this topic afterwards even in more depth, it wasn't really completely new to me, but I, um, I, I tried to find out ways how to um, adopt this to the world of trading. And if you want, this is in fact now uh, the result out of this. And um, let's, let's start and ask, answer the question, what are neurotransmitters? So neurotransmitters are often referred to as the body's chemical messengers. And um, the main neurotransmitters are, you have probably heard about them, in some or the other way, um, serotonin, then you have cortisol, you have testosterone, you have dopamine, and you have oxytocin, and you have actin. So <clears throat> these are, um, let's call them the main um, 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 neurotransmitters. There's also noadrenaline. This is the German word for this, I think, as far as I understand. We will go into more details in a few seconds then, and I will show you what um, uh, serotonin, for example, is responsible for, why you should why you should try to avoid um, stress since um, cortisol is then um, 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 a, a product which will naturally result in a, in a, a bad performance, especially when it comes to trading. Um, <clears throat> and now the thing is, I, I'd like to point it out right here. You probably have heard about this. And in fact, we also made this already a topic um, in one of our webinars here, in Trading Spotlight webinars, when we um, talked about trading psychology. Um, so there I uh, showed you, and I will, I will um, um, show you this, this chart again here within this presentation, but in several minutes then. Um, I, I, saw, um, I, I told you, I said that I um, understand when someone says you have to avoid emotions in your trading um, by all means, and you should never, ever, ever become emotional in your trading. But um, I have to disagree. After studying now, um, uh, especially the biochemistry and everything what's going on behind the scenes, because you can't avoid emotions in your trading. We are, we are human beings and we are, per definition, emotional. Uh, and we are driven by emotions. We are driven by those body chemical messengers, in fact. And our target is not to avoid emotions, but to make sure that we increase um, those emotions who tend to um, make us perform well, let's say, and try to decrease the amount of um, uh, emotions which are negatively affecting our performance. And here neurotransmitters, in fact, play a very, very crucial role. And now um, I want to do the following, or I did the following. In fact, I, I refer to the seminar 
and I um, and took this chart because I think it's so beautiful. It's 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 not just very colorful, but it's also very great to see what are um, uh, what is there to need for or let's quit here to testosterone or dopamine. Oh, I have here this 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 box. Um, but what are those neurotransmitters are responsible for? So when, when looking at serotonin, for example, probably you heard about this. Um, and in, interesting enough, serotonin is um, responsible for cognition, intelligence, ease, serenity, in fact. So um, this is something which is very, very obviously very important when it comes to learning in general. Um, you have in rats, you have cortisol. Cortisol is fear and stress. Um, this is what what you what you what you um, um, face in in a, in a period and during your losing period, for example. So, or let's put it um, um, more personal here. Well, I was um, before not before, but um, um, while during my studies, I, I was a trader. I, I worked as a trading assistant. You probably have read this within the interview I did with Admiral Markets, um, and many of my colleagues back then. We we're also playing uh, poker. So that was during the poker boom. Some of you probably have heard about this. And online poker was a very, very um, yeah, fascinating topic, in fact. And then um, I, I saw my colleagues playing there and I tried to figure out why is that? Because um, it, it wasn't that they're that they're addicted to gambling, but it was more like they they talked about it in a way. Um, you probably have, have imagined um, um, a scientist to talk about something. Um, they were talking about things like expected value. And I wanted to dig deeper into this. And this is how I got involved in trading, in fact. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, not trading, um, poker, in fact. Um, I started to playing um, online poker myself. and was quite successful, in fact. And um, most of my money I um, used then to, to finance my studies, I made playing online poker. So... And the interesting thing now is I was very successful right from the start um, and was in, a, in, a, in an upswing. It's just like it was the right side of variance. I made good money. I was um, capable of, 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 of paying my bills with it. And I was a really happy guy during that time. Um, and then the thing is, it's not always an upswing. You've probably seen that in trading. And this is also true for other games like poker, online poker, then in this case, um, and then rather sooner than later, there's a natural, let's call it mean reversion. And then this is the moment when you're still overall profitable and, and you're, you're, um, you're uh, I'm, I'm, I'm playing poker in this case, or you're trading in our case now um, with a positive expected value, but there are natural um, series or sequences of losing trades then, which means that you're from your upswing and the positive side of variance, you pull back to what you should expect, in fact. Um, and now the interesting thing about this is that after I entered this negative series then, um, it was devastating. I was feeling completely um, um, down. It was like I, I couldn't or I, I slept, but it was not um, um, as, as I uh, regained power and was like, um, okay, I go to bed now sleep, let's say 10 hours or something, and then I'm completely refreshed and start tomorrow from new and, and, and highly energetic. But it was more like I, I wake up and was like, oh, I was down again. And what I know today is um, that's the complete natural um, um, result out of having cortisol, the neurotransmitter um, cortisol here um, um, in me. I, or it was like my, my, my body was, was producing that at an extended um, rate, respectively, at a very, very high level. And um, instead of, of, of feeling like joy, lust, motivation here, dopamine, or um, um, wanted to learn something, serotonin here, or testosterone with courage and confidence, like um, you have a favorable hand, for example, then, or you're in a very favorable spot when it comes to trading, to, to give an example from this perspective, um, it was like I was, I was freeful. I was just like, oh, Shall I really push here at this hand, even though I know I probably had um, and I have a positive expectancy here, expectancy here, but I don't really believe in it. I, I was just, I was completely down and that extended and, and I was really, I felt so bad. I, I was just like, I was so tired and that was because of cortisol. It was, uh, that, that was the, the, um, um, uh, the, the neurotransmitter. Um, which was which was produced within my body, and one one of the reasons why I can now tell you, if you want, or no, put it differently, um, the guy it was a PhD in psychology, by the way, who ran the seminar um, three months ago. He said, "Well, 
all these neurotransmitters, um, you can't have enough of them. So like, um, for example, here, um, cognition, intelligence, ease, serenity, you want to have as much serotonin as possible. You want to have as much um, testosterone as possible, even though sometimes it gets a little uh, problematic with that. Ask, uh, let's say, 16-year-old um, um, boy and um, his testosterone hitting, uh, hitting the roof, and, and he's going completely crazy and thinks he rules the world, okay? But at the end of the day, um, also here, you can't have enough of it. Um, you can't have enough of dopamine, joy, lust, motivation. You can't have enough of this um, um, neurotransmitter. Oxytocin, for example, that's love, trust, liaison. You can't have enough of that. Um, if someone says, I'm, I'm, fu I'm full of oxytocin, it's too much. Um, I, I, I'm, I'm very, very happy to take to some of it at least because you just can't have enough of love and trust. Um, while... This is true for all neurotransmitters. It's not true for cortisol. This is the only neurotransmitter you want, where you want to keep the level as low as possible, in fact. And um, this is very, very important now because we can already draw some conclusions towards our trading with this knowledge. Because now we have here the neurotransmitters and the question what they are responsible for. And we want to focus on serotonin and dopamine alone here which are, as we pointed out in the chart before, for motivation, they are responsible for motivation, joy, and lust, and also for, for um, um, wanting to learn and, and, and intelligence, ease, serenity, okay? So if you want, you can, you can um, reduce it to the following. You can very roughly say the following. Serotonin and dopamine can be considered a so-called turbo boost when it comes to learning. Okay, so because these two neurotransmitters strongly support the learning process. If you have joyful, uh, if you are joyful, and if you feel motivated, and you want to learn something, um, then in, in, in addition to that, you see progress and positive results. Uh, and if you connect positive feelings to that, you keep on learning. So, or put it differently, and, and look at it from a very, very um, easy standpoint, how many people I know, I, I really can't, I haven't counted them, but they are, it's like endless number, an endless number of people telling me I hated mathematics in school. I can't really understand this. I, I mean, I study mathematics. I, as I told you already last Friday, um, every course in school um, on mathematics was, um, I was one of the first who, who signed um, 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 or who was, was signed in and wanted to make sure that he, he, got a place within the course. Um, and there are so many people now saying, well, I hated it so much. Um, and how difficult, I mean, just try to remember how difficult it was for you to learn mathematical whatever, algebra, what, whatever, number theory, um, how, how difficult it was for you to sit down at your desk and do your homework and try to improve. And um, that's mainly, I mean, at the end of the day, I have to say, it's probably too easy, too easy to say that, but teachers are very, very um, important in this aspect because if a teacher can't transport um, motivation and 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 um, the excitement and and can um, yeah motivate you to keep on learning and to see the fascination behind this topic, then it's so difficult to for you to stay in the game and to keep on learning. It's more like I have to do it, I do it, and after I, I, I finish the course, whatever, if I um, have a good mark, whatever, I'll just stop learning. Um, and this is something <clears throat> you can fully understand. And now the thing is, how can we use this knowledge when it comes to trading? And then we come to the thing. Um, it's, I, I already mentioned it. If you, for example, risk too much right at the start, um, especially at the beginning from your trading career, um, you take two big positions on. It's natural that you will uh, feel stressed out and that there's um, stress connected with big losses or big swings within your um, um, P&L, for example. And this will naturally frustrate you. And you, you, you really can't keep it up and, and be motivated and continue. But it's more like based on negative emotions where you want to make back um, the lost money, for example. So to stay um, motivated, 
you can't emphasize this often enough, especially after years within this industry and having seen plenty of people failing. The main reason they fail is because they want too much right at the start and the connected stress with it and the cortisol, which, which is then produced within, within your body and, and you feel, and, and especially if you don't make any progress, this is what keeps you at the end um, um, from becoming successful within your trading. So it's not necessarily sad that if you, if you keep on, 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 on being motivated that you, that you will um, succeed. That's not sad. I mean, if you continue trading with a, with a strategy which has a negative expectancy, you won't make it. That's just um, that's a mathematical matter of fact. So. But there's a higher chance to, if, especially if you, if you keep, it, keep it slow, um, to stay in the game long enough and be motivated long enough to continue to learn and see what works and what doesn't and then use it to your advantage in the long run. And then the so-called journey is the reward. That's, that's what, we, what we can say at the end, in fact. So it has something to do with your neurotransmitters. So if you keep on, again, let's go back to this. If you keep on... Um, 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 if you if you keep on on, on being motivated, um, or if you want to stay motivated, especially when you start trading, you should make sure that you feel motivated to, to learn and to learn more. I mean, at the end of the day, I can certainly understand that it can feel frustration uh, that, that you that you that you probably feel frustrated because of um, the the money coming in and you make with trading not being enough. I mean, I've heard this plenty of times. There's people um, then saying, well, I just made 10 euros a day. Okay, I had a winning day now today. I can see how, how great this move was and I really expected the market to move in my direction. Um, so there's also this, 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 let's call it to some extent overconfidence, probably connected because of a high testosterone um, and for the day or whatever. What, why, what, for whatever reason there is now for, for someone to be highly confident in his ability, at the end of the day, he looks at, uh, at his PL and just sees, okay, I made 10 euros. This is nothing. And this is also something, we mentioned it already, why it's so important to have non monetary goals connected to your trading. So it shouldn't be about making money. Consider the money you probably make as the, the, the price or um, a side effect. It's a side effect, but it's more, um, um, it's a mental game in this case, right? So you have to, to, to calm yourself down and to really get joy out of learning, for example. So put it differently. Um, currently, I'm, I'm working on a, on a project myself. I, I um, also said this um, during several uh, webinars in the past. Um, at the beginning of this year, I said, this year, I want to learn programming. So I know some, ba I, or I probably have some basic skills, but I really want to, to um, develop a knowledge here, which goes beyond what I know already, um, to use this then actively within my trading and make something out of this. And um, I see this step by step. I mean, after one and a half month, if I, if I see how, how far I already got right here, um, I feel just motivated to stay in the game and, and to keep on doing this. Now, put this um, 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 target you formulate for yourself at the beginning of the year, um, use this and, and say, okay, well, my target at the beginning of the year was I want to uh, go to the gym and let's say lose 10 kilogram or something um, to have a great summer body and look like, I don't know, Brad Pitt in his prime at the beach and uh, so just feel great. The only problem with that is that just imagine now you're fully motivated at the, let's say, 2nd of January, um, and you go to the gym and you have a plan. You have also something in regards to um, a nutrition and you really, you know what you want to achieve and you have this picture in your mind and everyone um, um, at the beach going crazy, looking at you and wow, wow, this is, this looks astonishing. Um, and then you say, okay, now I have to go full throttle and I have to really push hard. And then you stay in the gym three hours, three hours and it hurts so bad. And the next morning you wake up, you can't move. It's like you feel completely down. Um, again, this is, this is then the pain which is connected to, to uh, there's a saying, no pain, no gain, okay. But still, um, is it likely that you will continue workouts and go to the gym? I mean, it's, 
it, it takes you really um, more and more motivation. And this is what I mean by saying then, keep it small at the beginning, keep it slow. So go there for let's say 30 minutes, 40, 45 minutes probably. That's enough, that's completely enough. But if you continue to do this, let's say three, four months, then it becomes, um, um, re you, you, it's reinforcing and, and you, it becomes natural. You feel bad if you don't go um, uh, to the gym and if you don't work out. And this is how you can achieve um, this, keep the stress, in this case, when it comes to the gym, or in general to, to, to learning experience, keep the stress level as low as possible, actively find, find ways to actively reduce it and keep the joy, lust, motivation elevated and keep on working. And the more you do and, 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 and the, the more often you repeat it, the more it becomes natural and it, the more it is something you connect with feeling good, feeling great about it. And then it becomes something we, we, we call this in the um, um, uh, training psychology, which we, uh, which we um, talked about. This is, this is then to some extent unconscious competence. So it becomes completely natural. It's within you. It's, uh, it's within your blood. You, you can't live without that anymore. And this is something you have to understand, especially when it comes to trading, when you get started in trading. So many people are... Um, yeah, they're, they're, they're motivated to, to start trading because they're, they're, they're affected. They're, they are just fascinated by these pictures of um, fast cars and uh, the sunset somewhere at the beach. And then the guy sitting there with his laptop and, and, and trading and making um, um, the more money within one day um, as he used to make within his, his, his former job within a month, sitting at a beach and enjoying the, the sunset and everything. This is not what trading is about. It has never been. But the thing is that people use this as a motivation at the start, and they want to achieve this as quick as possible. And even though one can understand this, this is um, a guaranteed way to fail within this project. You, you really won't make it because the stress which is connected to the natural um, 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 aspect of trading, losing money, um, is so high that you want to avoid the pain and the stress which is connected to that and thus you will most likely fail and, and keep on uh, your, or stay within your, your old life, let's say. Um, and this is something you have to understand right from the start. So keep it slow, Keep it small. The journey is the reward. And the reason for that can be found here when it comes to cortisol and holding this cortisol level as, as low as possible while trying to increase dopamine, especially serotonin then when it comes to your trading. So one, one second. Um, this, this is an interesting question, in fact. So the question is whether Admiral is um, giving mentors to... Uh, to, to, to traders. So you mean whether you can uh, book a, um, um, someone who, who's working for Admiral to teach you trading, if, did, did I get this right? So that's probably something you have to, to um, ask them directly um, to, to Admiral Markets. I, I don't know. So what I'm aware of is that um, they um, look for very, um, they look for successful traders, for people who have um, um, deep knowledge of the matter. And then they book them to give webinars, for example, as we do right here. So this is, this is the usual way. If um, they go one step further here and, and um, make sure that you have a private mentor then, a private coaching, I'm, I'm at least not aware of that. So probably reach out to, our, um, to Admiral directly on this, on this question. So now we um, talked about this model here. Um, the Jerks Dotson model, in fact, um, already in one of the webinars when it came to the basics of, of trading psychology and uh, here the zone in the Jerks Dotson model. Um, so now the, the, the whole picture becomes quite clear, in fact. What is this zone we are talking to? So it's the, it's the region we, we already identified this as optimal arousal, in fact. So that was um, the first time when I said that uh, the, the saying, don't let emotions play um, such an important role, or don't, don't be emotional in your trading or you're uh, doomed to fail, that this is not right. I know what's, what, what people want to say with that, even though 
when looking at um, my personal experience, I can say that um, you have to be emotional because else everything else is just ridiculous because we are human beings and we're, we're emotionally driven. We have to use the positive ones and to increase our overall performance and we have to reduce the negative ones to decrease the negative impact these may have on our overall trading experience or, or on our trading in general. Um, and here the Jerks Dotson model gives already a good explanation of that. So you can see here that a certain level of arousal is very, very important um, and a certain level of stress also is important to perform well, even though the more stress and here, um, uh, strong anxiety and cortisol then starting to, to play a role here, you see that you, you, you get an impaired performance then and you drop here on the right and your performance dramatically de decreases again. Um, I tried to explain this um, with a with a problem metaphor. Uh, it's not really a metaphor, but let's um, uh, let's 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 imagine a, um, a soccer player like let's say Cristiano Ronaldo. Okay, so we all agree that he's a fantastic football uh, soccer player, and and um, I I don't even think that he had has to to warm up to perform better uh, than all of us right now listening here. But the thing is, um, before each game. Champions League or, um, um, uh, let's say, World Cup game or whatever, he also um, warms up, right? So it's not that he is um, 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 exiting the, the, the bus with, with the team and then going to the field and starts playing and plays at the highest level possible. But you can see him warming up before. And um, why is that? It's simple. Everyone can understand that because he has to warm up his muscles because the muscles perform only well at a certain level with a, with a certain, um, 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 if, 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 if they have a, a certain temperature, let's say. So, which means um, if he would exit the bus, go to the field and really push hard, there's a high, high risk that he would, um, uh, that he would, yeah, um, what's, what's the right word? Injure himself, right? So this is definitely true. And, and there's no question about that. So that's then when you see here the arousal, that's, the, that's called the stress level, when this is very, very low here. So you can't perform well if your muscles are cold. It's not possible. So then he warms up and then he finds himself in the zone right from the start of the game. But now imagine him to warm up, but to overpace during this warm up, to really extremely um, exhaust himself and, and running like a complete maniac um, over the field before the game already started because he's so hot and he just wants to, to start the game. This is then um, here the moment when he is so stressed out that he's in addition to, or and, um, um, as a result, he can perform well too. So you have to find a way here of this optimal arousal where you perform optimally. This is the same, which is true for trading too. And that's why I say you have to have a clear plan and to know yourself really well to understand where is my point of optimal arousal? Where is, where is my zone? How can I reach this zone every morning? So there's, there's lots of um, different ways to reach it. So for example, there was a time, um, um, or no, there wasn't a time, but there's still a, a time. Um, I'm currently, I need to um, exit my, my, my flat and um, um, I, I need you to breathe, let's say. It's like um, um, a, little, a little cold in the morning and this is very, very important for me to, to understand, okay, now I'm wake up. I woke up and I'm, I'm, I'm here. I'm, I'm, I try to perform well. In addition to that, over time I found out that it's um, very important for me, for example, to bring my uh, two kids to the kindergarten in the morning. So I found a way to manage my whole day and my, my, my daily routine based on, on this fact that I have to bring my children to the kindergarten first. Um, and then when I return, I can start the day. And this is, this is something which is important to me. In addition to that, I have um, a cup of, of coffee then, black coffee. And this is how I get started and why I can perform well right from the start. If someone sees me then, he will see, okay, um, he's obviously within his zone. So that can be completely different from, from, from your personal experience than what you need. But it's definitely um, um, important to understand that you have to find this 
point of optimal arousal and how to reach it. Um, and then start trading only if you reach this point for yourself. So, and uh, yeah, this is, this is something which is then noteworthy in regards to the, to the zone. Um, and uh, now we want to use this. We want to probably um, um, bring this, this, this knowledge now around neurotransmitters and the zone um, into um, a whole picture. And we, we want to, to, to create a context out of this. So, <clears throat> in fact, the zone can be considered as um, something we call a neurotransmitter balance. So, which means... Um, Reaching your zone might be very individual, but knowing, for example, that serotonin is released through, uh, through sweets, chocolate, and now um, there's, there's nutrition coming into play. Um, or dopamine is released through alcohol, nicotine, or coffee, and this can be of value, okay? Um, now, why, why is it important to, to, to know that? Um, now, let's say, you ha I, I said at the beginning, you can't have enough of um, 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 serotonin or dopamine, for example. That does not necessarily mean if we know that chocolate is um, increasing the level, at least um, uh, short term, increasing the level of serotonin, that you start your breakfast with like eating half, um, uh, 500 gram chocolate or something, or that you should start the day um, to reach a certain level of um, a dopamine then in this case and open a beer or something. We all agree that this is probably not the right way to start it. I mean, if it works for you, fine, but I would say it's only a short-term solution. Probably long-term, it's, uh, it's not the best way uh, to start your day, let's say. Um, but why is this important? Because to some of us, this might be only details, right? So some might say, um, I, I have breakfast or I don't have breakfast. It doesn't make a difference. I bet it, have, it makes a difference. It makes a big difference. And you have to find out whether it makes um, an, a difference in a way that it negatively affects your trading, for example. So it's also true that you have to find out what you need to reach your zone and, and how to, to reach a certain level in, in regards to neurotransmitters, that all these neurotransmitters um, are increased, which positively affect your performance in regards to trading, while you try to reduce all of these, reducing the stress. Let's put it differently. So if um, my plan in the morning, I have a, um, an agenda, I have a routine I follow. So, and I want to follow this routine as rigorously and um, 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 rigorously as possible, in fact. The only problem is sometimes there's people coming then to you asking you can you do me a favor here can you do me a favor there my wife something like that um and the thing is no i can't do you a favor because if i know do you a favor this will probably result in me um losing my path i have to follow my routine to reach my zone which will then result naturally in stress which will then over the day naturally affect my trading in a negative way, performance wise, right? And so it's very, very important to also have not just a path, but also to be disciplined enough to follow this path because if you don't follow it and there is then stress in some or the other way, it will over the day and over time negatively affect your trading and make it very, very difficult, if not impossible to reach your zone. So to know this, what I, do I have to do to reach a certain level of serotonin, of dopamine and everything? For example, by, in case of dopamine, also drinking coffee, but you have to find a way. So for example, I can say I, um, I'm, I'm having two black coffees in, in the morning. The third one would result in me losing um, my, my zone because it just feels like I, 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 I start to become hyperactive in this case. So this is a very, very important um, um, thing for me now. And instead of continuing drinking coffee, I switch over to tea, for example. So just to give you an easy example, how to understand this. Um, and uh, I do this especially to avoid negative impact it has on my trading performance or in general on my business performance. So knowing exactly what you need to consume, for example, or how long you need to work out in the morning. Some people need to go to the gym, let's say in they, they wake up at, say, 5 a.m., and then they have to, to go to the gym for one, one and a half hour, take a shower, and then they can start the day. Or they have to um, take a walk first, let's say with a dog, or they have to, to run a mile or something, and then they are capable of, of um, 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 performing well for the day. So whatever it is, 
it's important to know what it is so that you can increase your chance of reaching and staying in your zone within the day, which will naturally positively affect your trading effect. So this is, yeah, this is what it all comes down to when talking about neurotransmitters, serotonin, dopamine, and how to, to use this, in fact. Um, <clears throat> and I summed it up in Germany. I said uh, that um, um, that's how, in Germany, we call it muesli. It's uh, uh, cereals, how cereals can affect your trading, in fact. So it's um, very, very roughly said, but in fact, to grasp the concept, I think, it's um, definitely worth to look at it this way and understand that that's why it's so important to also write down a so-called trading psychological profile to get your know, to get yourself known very very well and in depth. And if you and this is also something which I recommend um, people, um, it's not just that you should um, create such a trading psychological profile yourself. Certainly you should, but you should also talk to someone who's very close to you and who can help you finding this out. Sometimes people around you will point out aspects which you take for granted or don't really realize, but they point it out and say, hey, haven't you, haven't you seen that this is something which makes you happy? It's like, um, I don't know, having, I don't know, whatever having, having um, um, a coffee in the morning or something, let's put it that way. Um, it makes you happy. You, you're, you're a complete different person then, and you're, you're so open-minded. Um, this is something which is of high, high um, um, value, in fact, invaluable, in fact, and, and you should definitely reach out to persons knowing you well to find out what helps you to reach this zone in this fact. So this, 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 this moment of, of, um, optimal arousal. Okay, so let's sum this up. Neurotransmitters are often referred to as the so-called body's chemical messengers. And the main neurotransmitters are serotonin, cortisol, testosterone, dopamine, oxy oxytocin, and actin. And um, serotonin and dopamine can be considered a tuber boost when it comes to learning. And they strongly support the learning process because you feel motivated, it, it makes fun to learn. While stress, pain, and fear, on the other hand, release negative neurotransmitters. In fact, as I know, only cortisol, which is the only neurotransmitter you should try to reduce. It's not sure whether it's possible to, to completely um, um, abandon it, but try to um, reduce the level of cortisol within your, your body um, to the absolute minimum, in fact. Probably, it's also true, uh, probably reach out to a doctor, ask him um, whether he can probably create a profile for you here um, and, and, and help you to understand what, um, um, what, what helps you to uh, reach your zone and feel comfortable and feel great and excited and you want to learn something while um, what, what, is, is what you should probably reduce. It's also something, to some extent, we can probably extend this to testosterone. If, if you have a problem with overconfidence, um, when it comes to trading, this could, be of, um, could become a problem. If the moment you, you start to um, take trades because you think you are the one who makes the rules and you don't have to follow what the market tells you to do, this could become a problem even though um, to some extent you shouldn't keep the testosterone uh, level too low because the um, confidence you get out of this and the um, uh, yeah, self-confidence which naturally arises out of this um, reduces to some extent the fear you have right from the start um, um, when taking a trade and you say, oh, I'm not sure whether I should take the trade. Oh, the loss is probably um, I'm too too high then, or I I I have I have um, I I'm I'm so fearful because I lose. I I no I I'm fearful because I fear to lose within the trade. Yeah. Um, so you need certainly a certain level of testosterone, but all in all, the main focus should at first at first glance, also based on personal experience, to be on cortisol here, because it also um, not just affects you within your trading, but also within your life, in fact. And then it could have negative um, um, consequences when it comes to your health, to your overall health, in fact. So on Wednesday, you can join Marcus here with the next Trading Spotlight webinar, and um, he will answer the question on how to outsmart the human factor in trading, including why trading is a human game and not a numbers game, 
I would disagree probably at this point, but I will uh, definitely reach out and, uh, and, and, and let's see here what, what he has to, to uh, present us here. You know, I have an idea in which direction he wants to, to uh, go here. Uh, the positive and negative effects of human traits on our trading experience. So in fact, you will probably have a good starting point with neurotransmitters now and why humans will always be humans in fact. And then he will answer the question on how we can turn our human weaknesses into strengths when trading. And yeah, it's 2 p.m. London on Wednesday, the 19th of February. Check your inbox for the webinar link. If you're registered, then you will uh, get it there. If not, if you watch this on YouTube, then reach out to admiralmarkets.com, the education's top, and there the webinar's top, and there you can register for the Trading Spotlight webinar series. Um, and there's the website, admiralmarkets.com. Here is the contact details where you can find more information on all um, services provided from Admiral Markets. And at the beginning, I mentioned it already, Admiral Markets is fully regulated. That's why we have to close this webinar with a risk disclaimer. That's it for my end. I wish you happy trading. Watch your stops. Have uh, a great week ahead and talk to you again on Friday again. I really look forward to it and talk to you soon. See you. Bye-bye.